How's it going guys? My name is Adrian from theorioncreative.com. If you're new here, so am I. So stick around because we got some cool stuff to talk about. Alright guys, so let me introduce myself. My name's Adrian Mendoza. I'm a filmmaker and photographer. I specialize in weddings and pretty much anything else that's freelance in pictures and video. And I've been doing it for a couple of years now and I just feel like I wanted to start this thing so maybe I could help somebody out like you who's maybe barely starting out or already kind of, you know, making your way up there. I am by no means a super professional or anything. So if you're here today, you've probably heard all the news about the Sony a7R 3 Sony's newest camera coming out next month. If you haven't reviewed the specs on the camera, I highly recommend doing so. I don't want to take up any time talking about that because you can just read that in the perfect list in bnh.com. But I do want to talk about, as you can tell from the title, I want to talk about the Sony A7. That's right, the Sony A7. Yes, it exists. I know, I did not know. I had no idea it existed. There's the A7R2, which is pretty popular. There's the Sony A7S2, which is what I'm using to film this video right now. Then there's the Sony A7 II, and these are all the full frame uh, cameras, which is what I prefer over the crop sensors like the A65 and A63. This camera right here, Sony A7. Guess how much it was? Because I actually didn't even know about it until I walked into Best Buy about two weeks before I had to shoot a wedding. So I walked into Best Buy with buying the A7 II in mind because that's what, you know, I was like, okay, full frame camera, 24 megapixels, $1,500, not bad. So I was like, perfect, A7 II, I've heard about it. It's full frame, it's Sony, check. I walk into Best Buy and I start talking with my friend who works there, who helps me every time I go. His name is Russell. He says, hey, you know what? There's actually an A7 in stock. And I'm like, there's an A7? And I'm like, well, obviously, duh. Like, if there's an A7 II, there's got to be an A7. So I was like, all right, well, let's, uh, let's see the specs on that. Guys, pretty much, they're the same cameras. The only key difference between the two cameras is that the Sony A7 does not have image stabilization in the body. But if you have image stabilized lenses, you're good. And if you're gonna use it for pictures only, you can probably get away with it by just raising up the shutter speed. That'll reduce the amount of shake and all that stuff in your pictures. Okay, so I literally just checked the price. That's because if you're not aware, the A7R2 just dropped $500 ever since barely yesterday that the A7R3 was announced. So the A7R2 is like around 2,400 right now compared to the 2,900 it was. So the A7 II is 1598, the A7 is 998. That's a nine, huh, that's a $600 difference. Guys, you can get the A7 instead of the A7 II if you want a good full frame camera and also something to sort of kind of get your feet wet in full frame and Sony if you're coming from Canon. If you're looking for a great camera, full frame, 24 megapixels, my go-to is the Sony A7. Now I'm gonna pull up a couple of pictures for you to see right now. So these pictures are from a wedding I shot two weeks ago at a pretty cool vineyard here in San Antonio. I was using the Sony A7 with the 85 millimeter G Master 1.4. I was using the G Master for pretty much most of the night and that's just because I had just bought it couple of days before the wedding and I was too excited. I was trigger happy with that lens. Well, the pictures came out really, really great. Um, but then I was also switching to the 50 millimeter, the regular Sony 50 millimeter 1.8. Okay, so if you just saw those pictures, let me know what you think. Of course, uh, feedback is always a great thing. But as you can see, the pictures are pretty good. They're 24 megapixels, and I don't think you would ever notice the fact 
that those were shot with an A7 or an A7 II. And for an unnoticeable difference to be $600 more on the A7 II than the A7, I would say get the A7 and use those extra $600 to invest on a lens, a G Master, or maybe even a Zeiss. All right, guys, so little reminder, um, like I said, when I walked into Best Buy, I didn't even know that the Sony A7 existed. And maybe it's just because I hadn't done enough research. But if you can't find it in your local Best Buy, just uh, feel free to check out the link in the description box. There you can probably see the current price that it's at and maybe it'll even kind of go down in price since the A7 R3 came out. Also in the description box, I'll put all the other links to all the gear that I use, which is right now I'm filming on the Sony A7S II with the 85 G Master 1.4. Super great combo, I love it. One caveat though, to keep in mind, the wedding that I shot, I was actually using an off-camera flash, which the Sony a7 is compatible with off-camera flash. So if you have something like the Explore 600, which is what I used on the wedding, it's gonna be compatible with the Sony a7. All right guys, so I think that's pretty much all I have to say. This is the first time I do this type of video where I talk about cameras. Forgive me if you were expecting me to talk about the specs, but the only reason I kind of chose to stay away from that is because if you're looking into getting a camera, you've probably already read the specs list on each camera a million times over and over again. What I'm looking for every time I go into a YouTube video is will the cheaper camera get me a better picture? I can't say that the Sony a7 will get you a better picture than the a7 II, but what I can tell you is that it's going to get you a great image and it's going to save you 600 bucks and that 600 bucks you can put, like I said, into nice glass or just any other gear. In my opinion, the best thing to do is stick with full frame cameras and the Sony a7 is really, really great, 998 bucks. Pair that with a 50 millimeter. These are around 200 right now, I think. That's, that's a $1,200 combo that you can shoot an entire wedding with. So remember guys, if you want the links to this camera, the Sony a7 and this lens, the 50 millimeter 1.8, uh, just the regular Sony version. I'll have links to these in the description box. Also, feel free to check out my website where I'll be posting the pictures pretty soon. And if you have an Instagram, feel free to follow me at Guy or at the Orion Creative, which is the other account where I post most of my wedding work and just kind of pictures I take around town and stuff. And the thing I'm really, really looking forward to is getting to know you. So leave a comment on your situation, whether it is you're looking for a camera to buy, you've already got a couple of cameras and you kind of just want to see more gear and if it's worth it and whatnot. So yeah, guys, I hope this video was helpful and informative. I'm going to be posting links to the pictures so you could see them and download them in high res in the description box as well. So check those out so you could do your pixel peeping. What oh. you want to press the sun. So yeah, if you want to check those out and download those as well, Feel free, that way you can pixel peep and whatnot. Um, but I just want to say again, my final word, use this for a wedding with a couple of lenses and off-camera flash. And guys, the results were amazing. So if somebody tells you you can't get a job done with a $900 camera, tell them you're wrong, I can. And guys, remember, it's not about how many megapixels you have, it's about your eye and the passion and creativity you put into your work. <laughs> so, once again, last time, thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you soon. I'll be posting another video next week. So if you want to, subscribe, that'll be really cool. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget, leave a comment. Thanks so much guys, see you later.